Hey everyone, so no chapter this week, and as a result, I've decided to make this video talking about the remaining plot points of the Yonko Saga, but also the future of One Piece. Also, I believe that next week's chapter is supposed to drop early. According to Sandman on Twitter, uh, a group of Japanese YouTubers were allowed, or rather invited, into Oda's studio, and Oda gave them an interview. So shout out to Sandman, and the first thing that Oda said was that he would like to end One Piece in five years, which, given all of the previous estimates that we've gotten over the years, I kind of take that with a grain of salt, because we, we've gotten, like, people saying, editors saying, like, oh, One Piece is... Uh, a certain percent complete, and then now Oda says that it's it's five years that he would like to, so it's it's kind of all over the place. I don't really take those estimates seriously anymore. However, I think that we as One Piece fans have a pretty good understanding of what the remaining plot points are that need to be covered and, and need to transpire in the story for the series of One Piece to reach its conclusion, and that's what this video is mainly about. Second thing that Oda mentioned is, or at least from what I understand is that he actually confirmed that Katakuri, Daifuku, and Oven are actually not Big Mom and Kaido's children. Another thing that Oda talks about in the interview is that he says that Stampede has a hint about Raftel, which is now like officially called Laftel or Laftail. I don't know. I, I've talked about this before, but to me the connection seems pretty obvious to be with the clan of D or the family of D because the, the people that have the D in their name end up dying smiling, you know, smiling, laughter, laugh tell, die smiling. So maybe there's a restriction upon the treasure of One Piece where in which only somebody with the bloodline of the D clan is capable of, you know, opening or getting the One Piece or something like that. Although I don't think that's true because I think Roger... When he died, he pretty much like opened up that quest for the entire world. Another thing that I thought about is that maybe Laugh Tale is the last remaining territory that belonged to that ancient kingdom, the, the kingdom of the Ds, that was destroyed by the world government during the Void Century. So maybe Laugh Tale was the only bit of territory that the world government wasn't able to destroy because the clan or the family of D were able to hide it. Because it's really well hidden, like, you know, you have to find four points to find out where it is, those four road poneglyphs. And the last thing that I thought was super important from the interview that was revealed by Oda is that the event that uh, was mentioned by the end of Dressrosa, uh, wherein which the Grand Fleet will participate, will happen soon. So if you don't remember, by the end of Dressrosa, the narrator says that uh, this group of people will eventually take part in a, in a very, very big event that will shape the world. Because of the Yonko Alliance, there's a couple of windows where in which the Grand Fleet could come into, uh, I mean, battle-wise, in terms of, like, battles that are left in the series. The first one is obviously the battle for Wano. The second one, I think, would be a battle to uh, get to Raftel or to get to, to the One Piece. And then the last one would be, like, the final war of the series. But the final war of the series, I, st I still think, is a little bit too far off. So um, if it's going to happen soon, I think it's either going to be the battle for Wano or, or the battle to get to Raftel and get to the One Piece. That being said, despite Oda saying that that event will happen soon, it's still going to take some time because he needs to build towards it, especially because, if you notice, the Grand Fleet is spread out. It's kind of like all over the place. We have characters like Leo and Sai who are back at the reverie, right? And then we have characters like Bartolomeo, who the last time we saw him, he was in Shanks' territory. I'll talk more about Shanks in a bit, but I think like that's going to be Bartolomeo's uh, re-entry into the story where he is uh, like the connection or that, that link that guides the Straw Hats to Shanks. I mean, granted, all of the captains from the Straw Hat Grand Fleet have uh, vivid cards to Luffy, so um, Bartolomeo can show up in Wano as well as the, uh, you know, the, the rest of the Alliance. And then after that, maybe Bartolomeo leads them to Shanks. I mean, I think it's pretty plausible that during the fight against Kaido, Luffy's life is in danger. Or, you know, his, his life force uh, begins to diminish. And that triggers the Vivri card. And so that leads the Alliance to just, you know, drop everything and head to Wano. And I forgot to mention this in my review, but I, I honestly don't see the Kaido and Big Mom Alliance lasting very long. And one of the main reasons for that is that if you look at their ideologies, if you look at their goals and what they say they want to do, um, Big Mom's goal and Kaido's goal are, are pretty different. In fact, they're, they're kind of like diametrically opposed in a sense because Big Mom, according to what we learned back in Whole Cake Island, Big Mom wants to create like this 
uh, utopia, quote unquote, uh, where she has all of these races, uh, all of the races in the One Piece world. That's why she wanted to recruit the giants, and that's why she asked King to join her crew. It's because you know she, she her goal is based on diversity in, in a way. She's still, you know, completely insane, but that's what she wants, right? Whereas Kaido, ever since his introduction, like, we got the impression that, I mean, he wanted to die, first and foremost. In fact, there's a line in his introduction where he, he's kind of jealous of Whitebeard for being able to die. He's like, oh, man, Whitebeard is such a lucky guy. So he has these very strong self-destructive tendencies, but because he can't die, because he can't self-destruct, he turns that frustration outward and, and, and aims it, you know, to, to destroy his environment. It's almost like he's bored of how weak the world is. Um, there's a moment in time where, like, before Luffy gets one-shotted, where he's taking all of Luffy's Gear 4 hits, and he just, like, he's just basically sighing. In disappointment, almost, like, kind of like, man, I, I thought this kid was going to be kind of a challenge, but I, I guess not. Like, just super, super bored and disappointed. And that also plays into giving us insight about why Kaido... Uh, is, is kind of like really interested in recruiting strong people. Um, but ultimately, it comes down to this. Big Mom's aim is sort of based on a corrupted sense of diversity, and Kaido uh, Kaido's aim is based on destruction. So you can't have it both ways. You can't be having picnics with people of different races while uh, destroying them. You know, it's, they're, they're kind of like uh, mutually exclusive. You either want to keep some part of the world intact, right, and have picnics and stuff, or you want to destroy it. So eventually, I'm pretty sure that these two characters are going to have to, you know, part ways, are going to have some kind of a discussion, and like, no, like, our goals are too different. So that's why I don't see this alliance lasting very long. Fortunately for Big Mom, she's much more likely to be defeated after Wano in Elbaf because of all of her connections to the giants. And the fact that she was, uh, you know, brought up with them, she was raised in Elbaf in a way. Uh, the fact that she wanted to get uh, one of her daughters, Lola, to marry Loki to, to form an alliance with the giants and possibly obtain an ancient weapon, that just adds a lot more, uh, you know, story to be resolved for Big Mom in Elbaf than, than in Wano. And this could be why Capone right now is busy trying to get Lola so that when Capone meets the Straw Hats again, he actually has Lola with them or with him. And she could answer our questions for as to why that marriage was so important to Big Mom. But then also if Lola married Lucky Roo, which is another popular fan theory, that would lead Capone to Shanks. So that's another connection to Shanks. So Bartolomeo can lead to Shanks, Capone can lead to Shanks, and these are the breadcrumbs that Oda has laid out that lead to the end of the Yonko saga. That being said, there's still a bunch of different plot points that this arc of Wano has to cover. For one, we need to find out about who the mink traitor is that led Jack to Zoe. I, I've read some comments of people thinking that maybe it's Carrot, who, who, by the way, has been noticeably absent in the manga recently. We haven't seen Carrot in a while. We know we're expecting a full moon soon so the minks can transform into their Sulong form. Another character that's been noticeably absent has been Sunisha. I don't know where the minks in Momonosuke parked the elephant, but because we did get a depiction, an illustration of the way that Wano is, uh, terrain wise it's like a big it's like a lake on top of like a like a volcano or something like it's it's like a mountain essentially i don't know how tall sunisha is in comparison to wano but if she could get up there that would that would benefit the alliance significantly just based on what she did to jack another plot point that needs to be resolved is denjito's identity we also need to find out more about odin's backstory there was a point in time where uh, I believe it was uh, Kinemon who was telling the story of Odin, and the Straw Hats got very emotional, so we have to find out what happened to Odin, what his story was about, all that good stuff. We also need to find out about the Shimotsuki clan, which, uh, I I've said this before, is a bunch of references connected to Zoro uh, with the name Shimotsuki. Ryuma's last name is Shimotsuki. Lord Yasui was also Shimotsuki, and the town where uh, Zoro trained to become a swordsman for the first time was also called Shimotsuki Village. And we also know that Gyukimaru served a lord by the name of Shimotsuki, who was in charge of Ringo. The people of Shimotsuki were in charge of Ringo and Hakumai at the same time. So uh, that's that's more info that we need to get. And we could get that information via an Odin flashback. Additionally, we need to find out more about Black Blades, how they're forged, who can make them. And I don't know if Edma, which is a sword that's supposed to go to Zoro in exchange for Shusui, is a Black Blade. But I do know that whether or not Enma is a Black Blade, I'm pretty certain that Zoro, by the end of Wano, will learn 
how to forge, how to make a black blade. So if Enma is a black blade, Zoro could end up with two black blades by the end of Wano. Enma and then whichever one he decides to make black by himself. Or I guess it just depends on how difficult making a black blade actually is, because this could be something like the very difficult feat that he won't be able to master in Wano, but he'll be able to master it eventually. Now, at the very least, we know that he has to, and this is a fact, like he has to learn how to cut fire at some point. Now, the fact that Zoro will be getting Enma, which is the legendary sword that was able to injure Kaido, that was able to leave a scar on Kaido, pretty much confirms, 100% guarantees, the fact that the fight against Kaido will not be a straight up one-on-one -on -one fight between Kaido and Luffy. Luffy will be getting help in this fight against Kaido. He is not ready to take down a Yonko purely by himself. And I know that maybe some people could have a problem with this and, and say that, oh, this is just Oda overhyping Zoro. But to me, it, it kind of makes perfect sense, the fact that Zoro would be able to deal some damage. I'm not saying defeat, I'm saying like deal some damage to a Yonko, especially if you remember the fact that Brook was actually able to injure Prometheus back in Whole Cake Island. And Brook is part of the mid-tier of the Straw Hats. So Zoro is like, you know, he's, he's part of the top tier of the Straw Hats, uh, you know, and Brook was able to injure Prometheus, which is technically not part of Big Mom's body, but it is part of like, you know, the soul of Big Mom, and he was able to injure that. So uh, to me, it just kind of, it, it makes sense that Zoro would be able, once he gets that upgraded sword, he would be able to do some damage to Kaido. Aside from Zoro and Luffy, I think characters that are likely to deal some damage to Kaido directly are perhaps some of the Nine Red Scabbards, mainly Inuarashi and Nekomamushi, uh, and then also Kid. And then maybe Hawkins with that special card that he has that boosts up the, the power of the user. Maybe even Sanji too with like the raid suit at full power. But let me know in the comment section, who do you think out of the characters that are in play, who do you think can actually deal, is capable of dealing some direct damage to Kaido? Now because of certain hints that Oda has been dropping and, and the way that things are escalating in Wano, I actually became aware of the fact that I think it's pretty plausible that Blackbeard will actually enter the main storyline a lot sooner than we initially thought. And here's why. The last time we saw Blackbeard, Oda showed Blackbeard reading the newspaper. And in the newspaper, Blackbeard says that Big Mom is busy chasing Monkey D. Luffy. She's busy chasing the Straw Hat. So if I were Blackbeard, think about this. If you were in Blackbeard's shoes, right? And you're trying to get to Raftel because he wants the One Piece. And you, you found out via the news that Big Mom was not in her territory. And you know that there's a road poneglyph, there's a red poneglyph in Whole Cake Island. I would take advantage of that opportunity of Big Mom not being there to go to Whole Cake Island, steal the road poneglyph, maybe even kidnap Pudding. I know that a lot of us thought that he would kidnap uh, Robin because Robin could read the poneglyphs, but uh, Pudding has a third eye that allows her to do the same thing. So, and then Moria is with him. We know that Moria has gone to Wano before. He was able to steal... Uh, Ryuma's corpse and Shisui, right? So, uh, like, Moria must know the ins and outs of Wano. He could use Moria to infiltrate Wano, get that other Wano road poneglyph, and he would still need the Zo poneglyph. But Tunisia, I think, sh should be around Wano, like, close by at least, during the, the Battle of Wano, right? So I don't, I don't think getting it would be, like, super hard. And then once he gets that, he's only missing the same poneglyph that the Straw Hats are missing, which nobody knows where it is or who's guarding it. But if he takes advantage of Big Mom not being in Whole Cake Island, and he takes advantage of the chaos in Wano, he can get those road poneglyphs and catch up with Luffy very, very quickly. We also know that the Marines are expected to make an entrance in Wano. At the very least, I think at least two admirals will be arriving to take care of things. Uh, I think the first one has to be Kizaru because when they first found out that Big Mom and Kaido were uh, preparing to, to, you know, do something, Kizaru asked Akainu, do you want me to go and handle things in Wano? And then Akainu Sakazuki said, wait, Bortolino, we need to wait. I'm going to send more reinforcements because we don't know how strong the samurai are of Wano. I feel like Blackbeard and Kizaru are destined to sort of have a confrontation to fight each other at one point because their logias 
their devil fruit powers are elemental opposites. And so I think it would be a really good opportunity to show, for Oda to show, light versus darkness. I think that would be a really smart way to hype up Blackbeard even more by having him defeat Kizaru. Because if you know what happens in real life, you know that light is not capable of escaping the gravitational pull, the force of a black hole. It can't escape it. That's why we haven't been able to see black holes up until recently, up until this year. You know, the first picture ever of a black hole. And that's because black holes do not reflect light. But ultimately what I'm trying to get to is that something needs to happen narrative-wise in order for Blackbeard, Marshall D. Teach, to be established as a much bigger threat than what he is now. And so the best way, or one of the ways that Oda can do that is by having all of the Yonko be defeated or fall and have him be the last one standing. Now, it's been foreshadowed in Marine Ford that Marshall D. Teach will fight Shanks and Shanks' crew. And if Shanks and his crew get defeated by Blackbeard, that not only has the effect of raising the emotional stakes for Luffy because of the promise of the Straw Hat and returning the Straw Hat once Luffy becomes a great pirate to Shanks, but also it raises the emotional stakes for Usopp because Usopp's dad, Yasopp, is part of Shanks' crew. Now, one of the things that I think people often forget about Shanks is that Shanks is essentially a moderate. He's pretty much like the, the present-day equivalent of a centrist, right? If you look at what he does and how he behaves, he just kind of wants everybody to get along. That's why he is respected by people in the government, people in the Marines, and people in the pirate world alike. Shanks' role as a character is to try and reduce body counts. We found out ever since his introduction that he's very, very slow to anger. Later on, Shanks warns Whitebeard about Ace going after Teach, because that can cause another problem. Of course, nobody listens to him, and look what ends up happening in Marineford. Ace and Whitebeard die. Uh, another thing that Shanks does is that he actually intercepts Kaido from reaching Marineford, from reaching Whitebeard. So he's, he's just trying to prevent conflict, and then, like, obviously... The most noteworthy thing that he does is to stop the actual war from escalating further. And then he also gets an audience with the Gorosei to, to talk. You know, just he wants to talk, use his words, solve everything through dialogue. And I think because he's such a moderate, this could be a point of contention. This could be uh, a source of friction between him and Luffy because Luffy is so anti-establishment. He's about, you know, just, just you know, taking down the established order, fighting people if he needs to. And Shanks is more about just kind of keeping the, the status quo. So I feel like that could be a point of conflict later on. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that Teach will be the one to defeat Shanks and his crew, or at the very least, force Shanks to take a backseat to Luffy. But even still, once Blackbeard gets defeated, you have to remember, Blackbeard is not the final threat. The world government, led by Emu, and the Gorosei is. We found out during the reverie that Emu actually hates Blackbeard as well. We saw his torn up bounty poster. So there's a lot of animosity there. And I think it's because the world government is truly against the, the main theme of Luffy the main theme of, I think, the Will of D, which is freedom. So ultimately, that's going to be the great world war of One Piece. It'll be a fight with the pirates on one side and the government on the other. We know that that final war should focus on the area near the Red Line, because that's where Marajoa is. And we also got a prophecy back in Fishman Island from Madame Shirley. And remember, Madame Shirley's prophecies are never wrong. And she stated, she prophesied that Luffy would be the one to destroy Fishman Island. And remember that Fishman Island is located directly underneath the Red Line. So if Fishman Island is to be destroyed, you can only imagine the amount of power that it's going to take to, to destroy an island. So by that point, like during the final war arc, pretty sure by then we'll know all of the three ancient weapons. We're only missing info on one, which is Uranus. But by that time, we're going to have like weapons of mass destruction, people, you know, just a bunch of armies coming in all at once to fight for the freedom of the world. And, and I feel like that's where the action is going to take place near the red line. And so to go along with Whitebeard's words before he died, once the One Piece is found, that will start the war that will turn the world upside down. So the fight against Blackbeard will be the fight for the One Piece. And the fight against Imusama, the world government, and the Marines will be the fight for the fate of the entire world. So overall, in terms of what's left, I think the, the action beats go as follows. We have the battle for Wano, we got Kaido's defeat. Then after that, the Yonkos that are left, meaning Big Mom and Shanks, will fall. Then after that, it's the fight for the One Piece. Then Blackbeard falls. 
and then it's it's like a whole world war. That being said, we might get a short mini arc in between these massive conflicts. And if that's going to be the case, uh, there's two options for a mini arc. Uh, you know, before the series ends. The first one to me would be a Vegapunk arc, but given the fact that Orochi was asking the CP0 agents to bring Vegapunk to Wano, that might not be necessary. And then the other option would be a moon arc, something to do with the moons of the world of One Piece, which connects to Enel. Although technically speaking, I think you could fit that content in uh, as prep for the final uh, World War arc. That's gonna do it for me today guys. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. Like the video if you did. That also really helps out. And comment down below with your thoughts about all these major plot points that I talked about relating to the ending of the Yonko saga and the ending of the series of One Piece. We still have some years left, but I think everything is set in place where like you can begin to infer, right, logically, like what's bound to happen at some point. Thanks again. Catch you guys later. Bye.